raises a lived experience in as much as we live within societies that designate us as having racial characteristics. It's a marking on bodies, it's a way that the outside world gives us identities and forces us into certain kinds of identities. Racial identities are formed sort of through cultural and social practices. Racism in the simplest sense are a series of practices in which people are classified and treated according to presumed uh, qualities of race. It is it's classificatory thinking. It is looking at another human being and instead of seeing a human being, seeing a member of a race. This is going to sound so meta, but I feel like I was born to do theater. It was just kind of always in my blood. In my junior year of high school, my father was like, what are you going to go to college for? So I applied for school and went to school for acting. I got into theater when I was in college. So my English professor told me, there's a play across the street. I think you might be interested. And I'm like, oh, OK. So I went across the street and literally there was this beautiful brand new performing arts center and I had a little part and that was it. And I was subsequently in every single show until I graduated. When you're doing a play, you're bringing something that is going to be living in front of a group of people who will take that and bring that in. I feel like it's the best way for people to connect on a mass level. There's few other places where you can be in a room with 500 or 600 or 1,000 other people feeling the same feelings at the same time. When I do my plays, like when I do something like For Colored Girls or when I did, you know, Fires in the Mirror, I mean, those pieces are just so important that I don't want them far away. I want you in there and really hearing it and feeling it. So I, I appreciate that and that's what I like about it. I mean, theater can be so many things, but it's always alive. Even shows that closed decades ago are still alive to me. I just really love dropping into somebody else's world and connecting with somebody who might be different than me on a real level and then stepping on stage and creating energy amongst 600 people and yourself. It's just mind blowing to me. And I love how theater and the arts bridges a gap. It provides a way for people who are different or might have different views to have a conversation. I went to Russell Sage and I experienced a lot of racism there and I felt like there wasn't really roles for me, there weren't opportunities for me and it was really discouraging and at one point I felt like I lost a lot of myself. So basically every year, every other year there was like one or two people of color in the company. So a lot of the work was tailored towards the majority of the company which was blonde with blue eyes or for guys brown hair and green eyes or whatever so they were doing uh remembering Anne frank and i was like i'm not even gonna audition and all my everybody in my class who were all white were like it's gonna be a waste of your time because you can't play Anne frank she's jewish and then i started believing that and my mom was like let the director tell you that if that's how the director feels then that's one thing but don't type yourself out or allow your classmates to type you out what do they know they're 18 19 20 just like you so i went in and i showed up and i got cast and i was like so excited about it and then we had a show that night the stage manager for that show was running back and forth telling me what people in the basement and the dressing rooms were saying about me getting cast. There was a girl that looks like Anne Frank and was talented, and everybody was saying, oh, she should have gotten cast. They never should have cast Morgan. Morgan's black. How could she play Anne Frank when she's black? And they were calling me Bland Frank, and they were saying I didn't deserve the role. And this, I was like getting this all night long. It was hard, but then this is the moment where I realized what theater can do for people and like how important it is to share people's stories because one night this little couple came and they came up to me and they were like 
thank you so much for doing this play. And I was like, oh, you know, you're welcome, like, whatever. And they're like, no, we think that it was so great that they cast someone who was black as Anne Frank because people don't realize how much um, black people were also affected during the Holocaust. And they just said to me, like, it really shows how connected you are to other people's pain and like other people's history. And you spoke for everybody and like everybody that's ever experienced that type of trauma or historical trauma. And then just like everybody, everything that everybody was saying didn't even matter anymore. I was just like, whatever, you guys don't know anything. <laughs> When I moved up here um, 20 years ago, I had no problem getting parts. And that's really what I appreciated. I played everything and I'm like, okay, so I'm, I must be doing good work because I'm going in and I'm getting parts. Everything changed when I started directing and I became a part of a club that I was not invited to. I am very demanding to my actors. I've been called difficult. I'm like, well, why are you calling me difficult? Because these people are paying money and I'm insisting on you guys doing good work. And why have I been asked, why do you want to do black plays? Because I'm black. What the f do you want to do? Why, would I, why else would I want to do black plays? Why do you want to do plays about women? Because I'm a woman. Why do you want to do plays about you know, the queer community, because they don't get a voice and I'm an ally. Because you're not doing it. Working with cisgender Caucasian men who do not like my technique has been very difficult. And it's gotten to the point that I had to break working relationships because of you're not going to treat me like shit because you don't like the way I work, because the way I work bring something out in you that you don't appreciate. A play I did last November that had a majority white female cast was extremely difficult and it's and it you know it's wasn't everybody in the cast it was like certain people but I, it was just like a horrible experience for me because I'm like, why are you treating me differently than you treat my colleagues who are white males? Why have they talked to you a certain way and I talk to you more respectively, but I'm getting pushback from you? It was very, very hard. And that's why I'm glad I did the most recent play, Milk Like Sugar, which was a predominantly black cast because it was more family oriented, it was more comforting, it was more nurturing and I needed that. I needed to get my happy back after doing that show in November, which was, as you can see by my expression, very painful and very, very difficult. And there are people who were part of that cast that I will never talk to again. So I was having conversations with professional theater companies in the area uh, and also regional theater companies. And they're telling, I'm saying, you know, this is a really good play, maybe you should do this, or you know, have you looked at this play? And they're all like, well, there's no black actors here. And then when that started to not be the truth, now they're like, okay, well, we have to give these people roles because they are here, but now it's always like the black roles or the black play. Um, it's not just like thinking about who's good actors. I feel like too often when it comes to casting, we're only thought of when the script says, young black woman or you know whatever it's necessary or it's the stereotypical role either the ghetto best friend the slave like why does the script have to say young black man for you to cast a young black man like so many people only reach out to me for roles when it specifically says 20 tw young 20s black female instead of like I'm funny and I'm endearing so the the characters that just say like funny charismatic why don't you type me into that? Diversity, I don't know. There's not enough inclusion. I don't like that word diversity, I've gotta be honest. Because diversity says to me that if there's one person of color, they, that's considered to be okay, and it's not. Schenectady Light Opera Company, SLOC, 
did in the Heights this season. Huge hit. I knew it was going to be a huge hit. But then they're going to do 1776, which also was a hit. So we're going to do a show about Dominicans in Morningside Heights, which is probably gentrified by now. And then afterwards, we're going to have a musical about people who own slaves. Who's not on the board who says, maybe we shouldn't do these plays like one after the other. Companies make money off of our stories, but they don't give us a seat at the table and they don't do more plays. I was told by a treasurer of a theater company, of a local community theater company, that the only plays that make money are Irish plays and Neil Simon. So what does that say to me? You know, unless you have um, a director who's going to be very inclusive, what does that say to me? Do I even audition? Do I even show up? Do you even want me to direct it? Cap Rep has not had one black or person of color director ever, ever. What the, f why is that? It goes back to representation. People always want to talk about diversity. They always want to talk about, oh, we need more diversity. But the thing is like, putting on dream girls does not mean you're diverse. It, proves that there is no representation in this company. And by representation, I mean somebody that's higher up, somebody that has the money, has the power, has the control, to look at them and be like, doing dream girls does not show the community that you're actually invested in producing a season that represents all of the people in the community. Most of Albany, and most of the areas where these theater companies are, Cap Rep, even like Proctors, are extremely diverse communities, there's lots of people of color, but then when you walk into the theater, it's all old, white, rich people that are seeing theater because you're picking shows that appeal to old, white, rich people. There needs to be more people of color and women on these boards. There needs to be. And I don't know how to do it. A very good friend of mine tried to get me on a board of a major company and he said no. It's not enough. It's not getting better. It's not. It's not. It's... It's very discouraging. A lot of artists are challenging the ideals that America was founded on. They're challenging what Americans have become to know as truth. So all this idea or these things that these people who have always been in power believe in don't really apply to what society believes in anymore. They need to be willing to be like, it's not our time anymore. So I think it's just about giving more opportunity to people of color, people who believe in progression, people who believe in creating theater that is of the times and that reflects what's going on right now in society and just cultivating that. My dream right now is to just have shows that when I go into the audience, I see people who look like me in the audience and people who don't look like me in the audience and we're all together having a good time looking, like, looking at people who look like us and don't look like us on stage. And seeing like someone who looks like me who's directing and doing the lights and doing the costumes and all that other stuff. All faces, not just one or the other. <laughs>